Now, uh, this has been an epic uh, week. It is, in some ways, the, the end of an era, the uh, certitudes of the past 25 years of the unipolar world are rapidly uh, dissolving all around us. Don't waste your time lamenting the passing of this unipolar era. It has not been good. And let's start, not good for the people of the United States by any stretch of the imagination. This was the era of reactionary politics, declining standards of living, cultural barbarism verging on bestialization, uh, a, a horrible time, uh, an eclipse of reason and an eclipse of the human personality, a crisis of the human personality up and down the line. Indeed, a, a, a terrible time. Uh, so we have, and I'll try to go into some historical background about this, the uh, self-assertion of the Russian Federation leading a coalition, right? You can call the coalition the BRICS coalition, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. You can think of it as the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, or you can think of it also as the Russian state system, because you have to think about countries like Belarus and Donetsk and Lugansk and, and these places. That's all part of a Russian uh, state system, which has been uh, rebuilt. I say, first of all, the United States has absolutely nothing to fear from this. It's all beneficial, uh, provided we can get rid of some of the lunatics that have been inhabiting the executive branch. As you know, we of the Tax Wall Street Party are taking credit big time for the ouster of ISIS czar John Allen. We didn't represent the big battalions, but we represented the catalyst and the coordination of the big battalions to get together on a project. Allen out by the end of the summer. And sure enough, with one or two days to spare in the summer of 2015, Allen was out on his ear, fired. And he is now being followed uh, by a couple of other hangers-on. I'm looking here at Politico. Politico, the uh, political uh, compendium. Uh, and this is from the 29th of September, just a couple of days ago. Pentagon's top Russian official resigns. The Pentagon top official overseeing military relations with Russia and Ukraine is resigning amid the ongoing debate within the Obama administration over to how to respond to Russian moves in Syria and Ukraine. This is Evelyn Farkas, F-A-R-K-A-S, Evelyn Farkas, Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Russia, Ukraine and Eurasia leaving at the end of November after five years in office at the State Department. And the word on here is she has advised three secretaries of defense, Gates, Panetta, and now Ash Carter, uh, advised three secretaries of defense on Russian policy, providing steady counsel on how the U.S. should respond to Russia's aggressive actions. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, she got $244 million in support for Ukraine, and she brought fresh thinking to Southeast Europe. She supported Montenegro in joining NATO. She wanted to have cooperation with Georgia and increasing multilateral cooperation with the three Caucasus nations. Now, this looks like a neocon firebrand to me. This looks like a uh, an operative, somebody who was sitting at a desk and uh, killing people at a distance uh, and wrecking the U.S. position uh, in the world. So... Um, the question is, how much lethal aid for the Ukrainian fascist regime? Uh, Ash Carter, we're told, is open to providing lethal aid to Ukraine. How dare he say this if that's not the administration policy? Fire him right away if he wants to be uh, a solo player going off the reservation. Um, the president has constrained the U.S. response. Thank God. Constrain it more, Obama. Uh, and uh, you get the idea. Hegel would have been another guy she worked for. Um, so she's out. Uh, that can only be good. Now, remember, we want Victoria Nuland out. Why don't we have a mass exodus of failed officials? The debacle of Syria. Uh, we're told now that the U.S. has nine, count them, nine Pentagon-funded moderate terrorist rebels. Boy, 
if the Russians can find nine moderate terrorist rebels, that's a needle in a haystack. Those Russians must have some kind of uh, GPS or guidance system if they can find nine terrorist rebels. Now, of course, the claim coming from Walnuts, McCain and others is that the Russians have bombed the moderate terrorist rebels, his friends, he claims, uh, with uh, that are funded by the Pentagon. So uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, funded by the CIA. The Pentagon funded ones are nine. The CIA ones where they don't do any vetting, those are more numerous. And those are getting clobbered, of course, because they're in a revolving door. They're in the same revolving door with the ISIS killers. So right now we've got uh, a race. And my, my zinger on this is to the Pentagon. If you don't keep pace, you will lose face. Pentagon, get in there and bomb ISIS, right? You're so great. You got the greatest military. Tell us, show us, show us. Don't let the Russians hog all the glory. Get in there and make your own contribution too. Let's have a peace race. Who can clobber ISIS? Because that's what we need. Uh, the Russian bombing looks very capable. We're now in the third day of the bombing. It was Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Good results. 12 targets now, including Raqqa, the capital. And we've got, however, an absurd piece of idiot diplomacy. Six countries, including the unfortunate Madame Merkel, say stop doing it. We'll be back in just a minute uh, with this on World Crisis Radio. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. Webster Tarpley here in Washington, D.C. So, uh... The Russian Federation is doing an effective job. This is serious bombing now. These are not the pinpricks and uh, phony war appeasement strategies imposed by now departing ISIS czar Allen. This is serious bombing. And then we've got the uh, the Western whiners uh, who were not strong enough to oust Allen for 12 months. Uh, now it's it seems to be done. So we've got the United, this, the, the countries that are saying to the Russian Federation, stop doing it. United States, United Kingdom, Federal Republic of Germany, France, Turkey, Qatar, and Saudi. They all say, stop, stop. You might hurt those terrorist rebels. Those are moderate terrorist rebels. The official U.S. position comes down to saying, you can bomb ISIS, but you can't bomb Al Qaeda. Let's send a letter to all of the 3,000 9 11 families and show them that the current uh, bombing policy does not allow anybody from al-Qaeda to get clobbered. And instead, that is what has to happen. So Walnuts McCain, the man who cavorts with cannibals, caliphs, and kidnappers, as he did, uh, arrest McCain for ISIS. Once again, we're back to the same slogan. Uh, by the way, McCain now has a primary opponent. He might be in trouble for next year. This is where reactionaries, evil people, can do good by opposing uh, McCain. So he's complaining about that. Uh, the the CIA uh, unvetted rebels uh, exist cheek by jowl with the with the ISIS people and the Al Qaeda people. So they're they're simply uh, inseparable. So this is this is a bunch of malarkey, and it it gets very close once again to public support for terrorism. That the U.S. is going to say our foreign policy is based on ISIS and Al Qaeda, which unfortunately has to some degree uh, been the case. Now, the Russians, uh, what are they doing? It's very obvious. You have got to stabilize Assad first. The main bulwark protecting the world from the ISIS butchers and madmen is the Syrian Arab army. And I've learned to respect them, as I think I mentioned a couple of times I visited a military hospital in Damascus in November of 2011. I was um, impressed by the bravery, by the, um, the the sense of duty of the wounded soldiers that I had there, and I told every one of them to the extent that I could, you are, are in the front line of civilization, and uh, there are at least some people in the Western world who understand your sacrifice and who thank you for it and are grateful because you're the front line against civilization, the, the point where civilization collides with barbarism. So you're in the front line. So what Russia has been doing, quite obviously, is to bomb the most advanced rebel positions, not really caring whether it's ISIS or 
al-Qaeda or Nusra or this phantomatic Free Syrian Army, or whether it's one of the 150 to 200 other uh, groupings of lunatics. Remember, the principle for Syria is this. The opposition is in parliament. There are opposition deputies in there. They're in there. So they can, if you want to oppose Assad, uh, you can do it. When I went to Homs, the governor of Homs had a communist and a wealthy woman, and they represented different opposition groups, and we talked to them. And that was the opposition then and now. A lot of opposition groups have realized the uh, gaping uh, abyss below them if they get caught up into ISIS, so they, they've come back to the parliament. Anybody out in the uh, countryside or in a city with armed opposition is a terrorist. It's just that simple. If you've got a Kalashnikov out in the, out in the slums or the countryside, you're a terrorist, and that makes you fair game. So Russia bombing the advanced rebel positions, protecting Assad. If there's any question of the collapse of Assad, the whole thing is over. Uh, you've got to have a ground force. Remember, the, gra- the bombing works best when you've got ISIS bunched up against the Syrian Arab army or the Kurds or Hezbollah or Iran. And we're hearing now that there will be a joint effort. It's even possible that China could join in it. This would make the world consensus overwhelming. The United States simply cannot go on with a foreign policy based on supporting terrorist groups. It's just that simple. It's got to end. And the people who are arguing for this are lunatics, and they've got to be fired. And that's Newland and Power and uh, quite, a, quite a few others. I forgot to say Ambassador McGurk, the scurrilous uh, sort of, uh, what can we say, a personality out of Boccaccio's Decameron. Uh, this McGurk uh, has been calling himself ambassador when he really doesn't have a permanent uh, title. So he's a fraud. Don't let McGurk take over Allen's job. He'll simply continue the wreckage uh, wrought by Allen. Now, uh, there's a conference going on today in Paris. It's a summit. It is uh, Germany with Merkel, France with Hollande, Putin for the Russian Federation, and Pornoshenko for Ukraine. This is billed as a Ukraine conference, but now the linkage between Syria and Ukraine is overwhelming because you've got to get Russian help into Syria to destroy ISIS, stop the civil war. Therefore, you've got to end the economic sanctions on Russia, end the economic sanctions on Syria, and then proceed to cooperate, open diplomatic relations with Assad. Merkel is now saying she needs Russia to solve the Syrian question. Merkel has now also said that Germany wants to cooperate with Assad. So cooperate, open your embassy, send weapons to Assad, help Assad, arrest the various free Syrian army terrorists on German territory while you still uh, have a chance. Um, one speculation, of course, is that the CIA response to all this is that the CIA will try to strike in southern Russia, be it Chechnya, be it uh, these other border areas in the Caucasus, Transcaucasus, North Caucasus, uh, or as we've seen uh, some city in uh, southern Russia or something of this kind, in other words, to act this uh, out. The group meeting in Paris is officially the continuation of Minsk II to oversee see the, the fulfillment of the Minsk II Accords, which on the whole, have been uh, uh, successful. So this is uh, this is going on uh, today. There, we, of course, we have to remember, right? Not all rebels are supplied through Turkey. We have other groups of rebels in southern Syria. Indeed, this is where the where the troubles began. Uh, that are supplied through Jordan. So don't forget Jordan. And the outlook of Jordan is not so different from the outlook of the uh, Saudi monarchy, right, based on tribes in Jordan. Now, uh, the other thing to remember, there never was a peaceful phase for the 99 millionth time. There never was this halcyon days. We're hearing about this on National Pentagon Radio this morning, NPR, the Diane Reem Show, International Radio. There never was a peaceful phase. The rebels were shooting from the first day, from the word go, going back to 1982. Back a minute Welcome back to uh, World Crisis Radio. Webster Tarpley here in Washington. It's uh, the afternoon of uh, October 2nd, 2015. And, of course, we just come from our 
uh, unique welcome Putin demonstration. The Tax Wall Street Party, United Front Against Austerity, was the only organization in North America to stage a welcome Putin greeting in Dag Hammarskjöld Plaza near the United Nations. Uh, we want to thank the Belarusian television for being there. We want to thank Press TV of Iran for being there. And uh, a couple of people associated with Russia today, but we also deplore the incomprehensible uh, editorial policy of Russia today that ignored, in effect, on their air, the uh, only pro-Putin demonstration. What is wrong uh, with that um, policy? Or better, you should ask what's right with it, because it's just incomprehensible. Lots of time for Rand and Ron and Assange and Snowden, but not enough time for people who actually uh, have some positive idea of Russia. Anyway, that will not stop us. We will simply uh, escalate until some of these people um, hopefully see the light. Now, at the United Nations, a lot of stuff. Um, Abu Abbas, Abu Mazen of the Palestinian Authority, has said that uh, he will no longer respect the Oslo Accords of the early 1990s, right? There was that bright dawn of post-Cold War negotiations, but it's all fallen through because of people like Netanyahu and because of the assassination of Rabin, this has not um, delivered its promise, needless to say. So Abu Abbas, um, attempting to keep attention focused on the Palestinians, as it certainly deserves to be. Netanyahu's histrionics have now reached the new all-time low. His impudence... Uh, but his desperation, right? The pathos and creepy quality, uh, the 45 second interval glaring at the, uh, the entire world, uh, shows, I think, a political desperado who is not long for power. And remember, who subsidizes those histrionic antics and that impudence is the American taxpayer. You're paying for him to put on that show. So better this guy should go into uh, t spending more time with his family. Um, Lavrov and Kerry uh, seem to be continuing some kind of dialogue, right? Notice we're, we're not featuring Skull and Bones Kerry on our immediate ouster list, uh, along with, uh, with Kaplan and Allen and Newland and Samantha Power, but um, we're, this is conditional on Kerry being reasonable. Um, Joubert, the uh, Saudi foreign minister, the guy who used to be here in Washington, right? They had sympathy gags for him. There were supposedly plots against him that were actually manufactured by the U.S. intelligence community to win him a little sympathy. Uh, Joubert says that with the Russian uh, presence in Syria, a red line has been crossed. And then the journalist said, well, what are you going to do about it, Saudi? And he said, you will see, right? Stay tuned. You will see. Uh, that's another one. There's another group that's ready to fight to the last American. Boy, they are going to be out there and aggressive and so forth. Also, domestically now, people are having a hard time uh, adjusting to the new realities. We have Miliband of uh, one of the international charity organizations and uh, Hillary Clinton candidate saying it's time to go back to a no-fly zone. Well, guess what? Uh, the Russian forces in Syria have essentially constructed a kind of a dome, a bubble over Syria. And the idea that the Israelis or the U.S. could go in there without provoking a major armed clash, that idea is passé. There would be a major armed clash, and God knows what would turn out uh, as, as the consequence of that. So we are going to decline that. We don't want to know what the result would be. Uh, instead, uh, it's time to set up the coordination. Right? There is a danger that with the U.S. and France and Russia and Britain and Syria and others, for what we know, uh, Gulf states might be there too. We just don't know. In bombing Syria, bombing ISIS and so forth, that um, – that could lead to complications. Now, there is a coordination, we're told. We're told that there's a coordination in Baghdad. There's a kind of a committee that meets there or, you know, a, a kind of a continuous consultation process. And that would be um, Iraq, Syria, Iran, 
and Russia. So they're coordinating. Why doesn't the U.S., why don't the British, French and U.S. join that coordination so that you can actually conduct a war on terror? What's illegitimate? If Nusra is threatening to overthrow the uh, Assad regime, which I don't believe, but if they were, it would make, make a whole lot of sense. It would be imperative to bomb uh, the heck out of Nusra because you've got to keep the Syrian Arab army in the field, well stocked, good morale and fighting qualities because they have all this. They will defend themselves, right? There's not the, this is not the Afghan army. It's not the Iraq army. This is the Syrian one and they fight. So um, let's start uh, cooperating. Now we're told, what's the mood in the Pentagon? We're told, first of all, that a lot of U.S. military officers are defeatist. They say, oh, gosh, we don't even know how to defeat ISIS. I'll tell you how to defeat ISIS. A thousand bomber raid in a day. You could do that, right? You, maybe you couldn't put a thousand in the air all at once like you did at the beginning of the first Gulf War in 1991. A thousand bomber raid, clobber ISIS, uh, wipe them out. This can be done. Force Turkey to close the border uh, and cooperate with Russia, cooperate with Assad, arm Assad, dump the free Syrian army, right? Those guys are lounge lizards in the four star hotels uh, of the Middle East. So we're told that there's defeatism. I think that defeatism is opposed, that this is simply their way of saying, you know, we're we're uh, you know, we're appeasers. We, we believe in the phony war. You got to get rid of officers that are sympathetic to Petraeus and Allen. And this Breedlove, this this guy, Breedlove is another person on the list of those who should be spending more time with their families. Now, we're also told that in the Pentagon and to some degree in the White House, there are people who are hoping that Putin will find a quagmire. Well, you can see he put his base in the middle of the Alawites, so no terrorists are going to have an easy time getting to the Russian base. And other than that, he's going to use air power. And the ground forces will once again be Syrian, Hezbollah, Iranian, Iraqi. Iraq has invited Russia to bomb ISIS in Iraq because the Allen policy of phony war and appeasement has been so wretched, so impotent and pathetic that uh, the, uh, the Iraqis can see that the U.S. is not helping them in the way the U.S. obviously could. The great military establishment that rolled over Saddam Hussein in six weeks and all the rest of this stuff is now... Checkmated by a rabble of ragtag psychotic killers. And again, they're not even the JV. They're the intramural teams. They are a big nothing. Um, Russia, uh, the, I'm sorry, National Pentagon Radio is also very unhappy with General Sisi. Um, and they are really distorting the facts about this. Uh, inside the U.S., we've got a slow process of adjusting opinions to the new realities. Realistic thinking um, is creeping into the nation. They have an article about how to end the Syrian civil war, which is an extremely tentative and cautious opening to uh, to Assad. Well, we have to tell the uh, the Europeans, right, Merkel and company, uh, scream louder, make that uh, that objection known, and please, Merkel, at least Merkel, don't sign a document saying that Russia should stop bombing the ISIS people? What is that? Or any any terrorist rebel you find. It's just, just crazy. Um, but anyway, things are moving, and you can, you can already see the, the outlines of a, of a new world, a, a bipolar world. Uh, and it's going to be better. Trust me, it's going to be better. Back in a minute on World Crisis Radio. <laughs> 